This is the Winning Edge Talks podcast and I am Vishwanath your host. I am a sports and mental conditioning coach, author, blogger, counselor and podcaster. Dear Lisna, we know of many superstar tennis players in the GOAT club, the greatest of all time club. The way Novak Djokovic is going, he will end up as the greatest ever in the GOAT club. Novak Djokovic, the supreme GOAT, is the topic of this episode. On Sunday, the 29th of January, at the Melbourne Park, Djokovic and Stefanos Tsitsipas met each other in the finals of the Australian Open 2023. The Greek god of tennis, Stefanos Tsitsipas, was chasing his first Grand Slam title, while Novak Djokovic, his 10th Australian Open and a career 22nd Grand Slam title. Both were vying for the world number one spot. Those who watched this scintillating match would be convinced that this was a battle of inequals. Except Novak, Sisypas would have beaten anyone that day. But he tried his best and in the second and third sets, he was able to take Novak to the tie breaks and couple of times he was riding on set points. This by no means a small achievement. I must say, since the dawn of this millennium, we have been blessed to have witnessed the big three in action. The 80s and the 90s saw some of the greatest players in action, but no other era has captivated the fans like the era that belong to Roger, Rafa and Djokovic. Once again, not to discount the achievements of the Queen of Tennis, Cyrilla Williams, who has won 23 Grand Slams. The big three have stood the test of time and have lasted for more than two decades, weathering the challenges posed by the young, talented and fitter tennis players year after year. They are talented no doubt, but to keep winning consistently for so many years is phenomenal. It shows their character. This reminds me of a quote from the famous basketball coach John Wooden. He said, winning takes talent, to repeat takes character. Apart from other tennis skills and fighting qualities, mental toughness and sporting behavior have been the hallmark of the big three. They have been excellent ambassadors of the sport, perfect role models for the next generation of athletes and not just tennis players. Each one of them has a story to tell. Whenever I witnessed Roger Federer, I saw perfection in him, the Mr. Perfect in every sense of the word and on and off the court. When I see Novak, I get the same feeling. Why do we say this? The reason we say this is because these goats, as they are referred to, are able to keep the rallies going for a long time, play flawless tennis and to be able to find the depths and corners at will. Their accuracy is so great that they can hit winners by placing the ball as close to the last sidelines as possible. It is also in their ability to play the big points well under pressure and stay focused and calm in any situation of the match. What we saw on Sunday is not total perfection like what a straight line or a circle could represent. Novak Djokovic was only close to being perfect, but not 100% perfect. He made errors, he served double faults. After all, he is human and not a programmed robot. 
Nadia Comenish, the gymnast, after being rewarded with a perfect 10 at the Montreal Olympics, said something like, It was not a perfect 10 performance. I was expecting a 9.95 or something. There were times I had done better routines than that. The funny part was that the computer scoreboard that day was not set to a 10 score because nobody believed a gymnast would get a 10 score. Carl Jung, one of the fathers of psychology, once said, Perfection belongs to the gods. The most we can hope for is excellence. As if to agree with him, the great coach Vince Lombardi says, Perfection is not attainable, but if we chase perfection, we can catch excellence. Lombardi is hinting that the strife for perfection can ultimately lead to excellence. Excellence is what the victory of tennis is always after. It is their quest to get better and better each day. This has taken them closer to perfection. The common feature of the big three is that they have reached the pinnacle of the career beyond the age of 35. Roger Federer quit only last year at the age of 40. Rafael Nadal at 36, though troubled by injuries, still has some game left in him. Novak Djokovic at 35 years of age is raging fit and people expect him to go for another three years if his body holds up. Novak already has 22 Grand Slams and he may as well end up a minimum of 25 to 30 Grand Slams if everything goes well. This record when achieved will see him as the greatest player in the history of lawn tennis. It surprised everyone that in an extremely physical sport how the three giants of tennis have been able to go past the age of 35 and still challenge younger and fitter players. Let us look into this factor before moving on to Novak Djokovic and his greatness. In the year 2017, I wrote a blog, Veterans Show the Way in Mind Games, a blog post that was dedicated to the many veterans in different sports that included Federer and Serena Williams, who were still battling it out past the age of 35 and managing it to be the best in the world. In the blog, I explored the reasons on how these athletes who are above 35 were able to extend their shelf life. Let's recall a few of them. Improvement in the quality of equipment that help players to add power to the game and conserve their energy. Improved quality of apparels that gave them more comfort than before. Scientific training methods and technology that assisted them for their strength and conditioning. Following a well-balanced diet and a nutrition plan. Working with support staff that comprised experts from different fields to assist them. Knowing themselves, their mind and their bodies better than anyone. The competitive experience they gained over the years taught them to get the best out of themselves. Now, let's take a look at Novak Djokovic to discover the secrets to his greatness. Novak was born in Yugoslavia in 1987, a country which faced an internal war and saw the breakup into smaller countries that includes Serbia, a country to which Novak Djokovic belongs. In the 1990s, at a place where he lived, there was a lot of war, crisis and sanctions which him and his entire family had to face. There were very tough times for Novak. Everything from food, water, rations were scarce. 
he had to stand in a queue as a young boy of four to get access to his basic needs. It is learned that he started playing tennis from the age of four and there were times when he was practicing, bombs exploded nearby and he had to run and find a shelter at the basement of their building. Djokovic says condition in which he grew up and the adversities he faced early in his life made him mentally tough. The mental strength and never give up spirit for which he is known for comes from his upbringing. Blessings come to you disguised as problems, don't they? Today at the peak of his career, all we see is glory. Behind this glory, there is a story of hardship, hard work, determination, sacrifice, pain and suffering. He suffered through the many defeats he received early in his career and learned from them. Life is the greatest teacher. What is so special about Novak Djokovic? I just now mentioned some of the factors that help the longevity of some senior athletes in the world. Novak Djokovic practices all of them. Besides, he has his own regimen and training methods that has perhaps hoisted him to the peak of the tennis world. First and foremost, his eating habits, which according to him has made him a different person. What he eats is 50% raw, being wheat gluten resistant, he has switched over to gluten free diet. Early in the morning, on waking up from bed, he drinks a glass of lukewarm water with a lemon. Throughout the day, he is on a gluten free, carb free and sugar free diet. He eats almonds, walnuts, peanuts, bananas berries and vegetables in plenty. He doesn't consume any junk food. For his dinner, he consumes food which has less carb and more protein. The extra protein is to replenish the cells and help them grow. He avoids a red meat and is mostly on a low fat diet comprising chicken and fish. He consumes plenty of water and protein shakes throughout the day. He believes in the phrase, you are what you eat and has addressed this topic on nutrition and diet in his book, Serve to Win. Apart from the exercises that his fitness, strength and conditioning team prescribes, he does a lot of yoga, tai chi and stretching exercises. Yoga and stretching exercises have helped his muscles to relax and be more flexible in his day-to-day -day routines and also on the tennis court. We have witnessed how he exhibits his flexibility while serving and while reaching out to the ball far away from him. He knows about the value of sleep and sleeps for 8 hours after a hard day of work on the tennis court. To deal with his personal issues and to keep his mind positive, calm and relaxed, he sees a spiritual guru by name Pepe Imaz, who is a former professional tennis player turned spiritual master from Spain. Novak Djokovic says the practice of mindfulness has helped him immensely. In his own words, as written in his book Serve to Win, he writes, I do it every day for 15 minutes and it is as important to me as my physical training. Instead of trying to silence your mind or find inner peace, you allow and accept your thoughts as they come. They do bounce around like crazy but they are supposed to. Your job is to let them come and go. I have done so much mindfulness that my brain functions better now automatically. I used to freeze up whenever I made a mistake. Now, when I blow a serve or shank a backhand, I still get those flashes of self-doubt, but I know how to handle them. Novak Djokovic grew up 
in Serbia and the mountains cover a large part of that country. As a boy, his first love was skiing before he took to tennis. He loves to go mountain biking whenever time permits him. Kovac uses the CVAC which means Cyclic Variations in Adaptive Conditioning. CVAC exposes the user to controlled variation. In other words, it's all about altitude acclimatization. He is well aware of the benefits of training up on the mountains. CVAC gives him a mountain-like simulation atmosphere. The benefits of CVAC are improvement in blood circulation, boosting of the oxygen-rich blood cells, removal of lactic acid, increase in energy, stamina and endurance. It helps sleep patterns, mental activity and alertness. What we are seeing are his achievements and the glory. But what we don't see is the strife, the sweat, blood and tears that has gone behind it. What do we learn from the greats or the super duper achievers in the sports, whatever you call them? History tells us that 80% of the athletes who have made it big in sports have come from the impoverished backgrounds or those who have come out of adversities and tragedies and the remaining 20% are those who might have come from families who could provide for them and be with them whenever they felt wanted. In both cases, whether the athletes are talented or not, whether they are rich or poor, to rise to the top, they have to work hard, go through the grind and do the things necessary to get there. But for the present generation of upcoming athletes who come from the 80% group, those that belong to the underprivileged group, they should not sit down and fret for the lack of privileges in their life. Rather, they should become self-reliant and work harder than those born with a silver spoon in the mouth. They need to read, research on what it takes to become successful. They have to talk to the elite athletes about their journey, their work ethics, the food habits, the exercise regime they follow, the strength and conditioning and the dietary aspect. They can talk to them about the success mindset, maximizing their mental ability for success. They must understand that hard work is the key and there is no shortcut to success. Once India's iconic cricketer Virat Kohli and his actor wife Anushka Sharma appearing at an unacademy online talk show said, you must work so hard that the gods will take notice of you and bless you one day. This is all I have for you in this episode. This is Vishwanath signing off for Winning Edge Talks podcast. Before I go, I want to remind you to take a look at my website www.winningedgeconsulting.in W-I-N-N-I-N-G E-D-G C-O-N-S-U-L-T-I-N-G dot I-N Bye for now. We'll catch up with you soon.